Okay, so I want to welcome everyone to the Q&A session. I want to welcome everyone to the Q&A session for um, the IMTF indicator uh, that we released uh, in January. Um, right now we released it for TradingView. Uh, we will uh, talk about the other platforms that we're going to release it for too. Okay, so the reason why we're having this is, is that, um, as you guys know, we released a, uh, the IMTF indicator for TradingView. Uh, for promotional price of $99 a year, okay, uh, we've been, it's been a really big hit for a lot of people, uh, it's changed a lot of people's in the way they're trading and the thought process and stuff like that. Also, tons of people have had a lot of questions in regards to this indicator. Um, so, you know, one of the things we want to do was to have everyone come on a webinar to do a Q&A session instead of responding to everyone individually. Remember, it's a $99 product a year, so we're not going to sit there and respond right away to your guys' questions. Uh, all the questions will be via email and set of phone and stuff like that. And I'll get to the support side for this indicator too um, and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the Q&As that we've gotten, uh, the questions we've gotten via email, phone calls, and everything in the last couple of weeks. I'm going to address those first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to address all the questions you guys have had uh, that you just posted now. Okay, so let's begin. This will be recorded and we'll send you the recording uh, once it's available uh, and so forth. Okay, let's go for a normal disclaimer to state, uh, the, which is right here. This disclaimer basically states this is for education use only. We're not soliciting you buy or sell any particular instrument. If you do so, you're doing that at your own risk. All information is owned by EII Capital Group. It cannot copy to be distributed without our written permission. If you do so, you're doing that at your uh, ri own risk. Um, all, we are broker neutral, so we support various brokerage platforms out there from TradeStation, eSignal, Thinkorswim, and TradingView. Today, we're going to be focusing on TradingView, specifically since the IMTF indicator is only available for TradingView right now. As I mentioned, we will talk about the other platforms we will be supporting uh, this year uh, towards the end of this presentation. Okay, so before we go for questions, let's kind of go for the background and everything. Okay, so remember we've released a couple of videos out there okay there's no manual for this indicator and the reason why is is that we chose not to do a manual we chose to do videos short simple videos so if you look there's a couple of videos that you have access to now one is basically a video on trading view so if you never use trading view there's a little video i created out there that goes through TradingView step by step on how they add the, the indicator, uh, all of the components of TradingView, how to set up different charts and stuff like that based on the subscriptions you guys have. So there's one video there. A second video specifically talks about IMTF, uh, support resistances. Short, simple videos that we've created there that's available there. And then the third video that you guys have access to is pretty much the product launch video. So there's three main videos out there that you guys could reference that you could go through and learn more about this indicator, how to use it, and how to use it on TradingView to also. Okay, we are not here to support the TradingView platform and show you guys all the little details there. That is not our specialty. If you guys have issues with TradingView, you have to take them up with TradingView, not with us. If there's something we could help you with, then definitely we will. But remember, that's not our platform at all. All we're doing is providing an indicator within uh, someone else's charting online charting platform. Okay. So I want to make sure that's very clear. Uh, if you guys don't have the links, don't worry. We will provide them for you um, um, in the email with follow-up and so forth. Okay. Now, before we begin, I want to go, and go for the background. I'm not going to go for everything that we did in the product launch. So I'm going to give you a short, simple method here. So here's a call flow of a trading plan. So there's two types of entries traders take. One is breakout, one's pullback. So I'm going to talk about both of them. Okay. So the very first one's a breakout trading plan. In a breakout trading plan, the well, first thing you need to do is pick your trading time frame. Now, some this trading time frame varies from person to person. During the 
the launch, we specifically talked about 60 minutes, we talked about 240 minutes, we talked about daily. You could choose whatever trading time frame you want. If you're a day trader and love a three minute, then you go down to a three minute. If you like a five minute, you go down to a five minute. If 60 minute, you go down to 60 minutes. So whatever trading time frame you're comfortable with, go to that particular time frame. If you don't have a trading time frame at all or you're new to trading, I would suggest either trading a 60 minute or a 240 minute. Reason why, those have high probability success behind those two time frames. Okay, so it doesn't really matter to us what time frame you choose, that's your preference. A lot of people came back and said, Manash, you were only showing 60 minute, does this only work for 60 minute? Does it really work on one minute or three minute? It does work on any time frame, it does not matter. If you guys have been following us for years, you would notice that one thing, we do not care about what time frames you trade. Okay, there's no limitations. Everything we talk about will work for any instrument in any time frame out there. Okay, so pick whatever trading time frame you want and then we proceed forward from there. Once you pick your trading time frame, okay, then what you want to do is look for a setup. Okay, now what we did was we shaded the background color. So if you're on a white chart, where you have all the, uh, the chart is in the white background, we shaded the background. So when there's a bullish setup, you're going to have a green shaded background. When there's a bearish setup, you're going to have a red shaded background. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Okay? As long as you, the, sh the area is shaded, then you could sit there and set up for a trade, either a pullback or breakout. It doesn't matter. But if it's not shaded, that's not a high probability scenario at all. Okay. Now you do not need to know Ichimoku to do this at all. Okay. All you have to do is just look for the shaded area. And I'll show you some scenarios where you're going to have Ichimoku or you can apply it to any other technical system out there from Fibonacci, Elite Wave, RSI, CCI, Bollinger Bands, Stochastics or anything else out there. And I'll show you exactly how you could do that in just a moment. Okay. So you look for a setup. That means you're looking for a green background for a bullish setup or a red background for a bearish setup. Okay. Once you have that for your trading time frame, now what you could do is you could set up for a breakout trade. I'll talk about the pullback trade in a minute. Okay. Now you're going to go into this optimization box here. Okay. So in that optimization box, you're going to use whatever technical system you use. Okay, we're not telling you to change your technical system at all. We personally prefer Ichimoku because that's basically what we trade. Okay, if you like Fibonacci, then you start applying your Fibonacci rules. If you like Elite Wave, then you start applying your Elite Wave rules. If you like DeMarc indicators, you apply that. If you like Bollinger Bands, you apply that. So this is where your trading plan comes into play and you apply your optimization rules. Okay, so you make sure that, like if you're doing R stochastics and stuff like that, you're making sure there's no divergence with MACDs and all that stuff. So this is where you're going to apply any optimization you have based on your current technical system. Okay, and I'll show you the Ichimoku way of optimizing, but that's basically you don't have to use that as optional. Okay, now you're going to optimize, and if your trading plan says it's good to go, then you're going to move forward. If your trading plan says it's not good trade, then at that point you're going to start back at the very beginning. So let's assume that your trading plan says everything's good to go, your optimization rules have been met, and now basically you're going to move forward and you're going to place your entry for the breakout. On the chart, we have blue dots. Okay, So whenever you have a shaded area, these blue dots will appear. If you have a green shaded area, which means it's bullish, the blue dots will be above price. And they'll tell you exactly where the breakout entry should be. So that's where you'll put your buy stop order for a breakout entry. If you have a bearish setup, which is a red background, your blue dots will be below price. And that's where you'll basically put your sell stop order in. Once you put that buy stop order or your sell stop order for your breakout entry, then you will need to put your conditional stop. The conditional stop will basically be the green dots, okay? And that's basically where your conditional stop would be. Once you have everything there, then what you're going to do is you're going to apply your money management rules based on your trading plan. 
If your money management rules say it's not good at all, then you're basically going to restart and you're not going to keep that setup at all. If your money management rules are good, you're going to basically keep that trade there and you're going to allow the markets to fulfill that order if it wants to. Okay, so this is your simple trading plan here for breakout for breakout plans. On the launch video that we did, I went for this in great detail. This is a high-level simplified form of everything that we went through in detail. Okay, here's a simple chart here. This is IBM on a 30-minute that we took, and you could see here this is a green shaded area here. This is bullish setup right there. And you can see the blue dots here are basically your breakout entries right there. And let me mark that up to make sure you guys see that. So these blue dots here are your breakout entry. And these green dots here are your conditional stop. Okay. So you're going to place this here. And then what's going to happen is once you enter the trade, these green dots are going to move. And that will become your trailing stop too. Okay. So that's basically a breakout trade right there. Now. Let me get to the pullback. Most people don't like breakouts at all. They like pullbacks. So let's go for pullbacks. Pullbacks have pretty much the same trading plan here. You pick your trading time frame. Then you look for a green or red setup. And then you apply your optimization rule. If everything looks good, then you proceed forward. Now, where do you place your entry? You place your entry on either dots or crosses. And I'm going to explain that in just a moment. Okay, so you're going to place basically a buy limit order at a dot or cross, and I'll explain the which one you would do in just a moment. And then uh, once you do that, then your stop, your conditional stop, and your trailing stop, once you enter the trade, will be on the green dots. Once you have that, you apply your money management rules, and you move forward. Okay, now let's explain the entry. This is where a lot of people are getting confused, so I want to step with this step by step. Let's assume you're a day trader, okay? That means you're trading anything from one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way up to 50 minutes. If you're a day trader, these are the rules you're gonna apply. If you're trading 60 minutes or higher, you're gonna apply the rules at the bottom in a minute. I'm gonna go through, okay? So if you're a day trader, then what you're looking for is if you have a dot, Okay, in a green or red zone, that means you got average probability. That's basically where your entry would be for a buy limit order or your sell limit order. Okay, if you have an X there, that means it's high probability. That's a great pullback. Your probabilities are high on that support or that resistance holding. If you have a dot or cross, that's even higher. That's the best one. Okay, sometimes the dot will be right on top of the cross, sometimes they're off it. Okay, there's been some questions is, is, is that if the dot and the cross are far away from each other, is that still okay? If they're on the same bar, that's perfectly fine. The question then a lot of people ask is, where do I put my entry? Well, if it's a bullish trade and the dot's above the cross, then I would put my entry at the dot. If it's a bearish trade and the cross was below the dot, I'll put it on the cross. So whichever one is the first, then you want to basically put the order there. Reason why is, is that if you put the order at the cross and the cross is below the dot for a bullish scenario, then what could happen is it could hit the purple dot, bounce off there, and if your order was at the cross, you never would have entered at all. Okay? So if you're a day trader, and you want the highest probability situation, what you're looking for in a shaded area is a dot and a cross on the same bar. That's the highest probability, and you know at that point that support resistance is strong. Reason why is when you have a dot and cross, that's telling you that all the day traders, all the swing traders, and all the long-term traders are thinking the same support or same resistance. That means everyone's thinking the same way. That means that support or that resistance where that dot across is has a high probability of holding. Okay? The second high probability is a cross. Okay? So if you're a conservative trader, you're at least looking for a cross or a cross and a dot. If you're an aggressive trader where you're looking for a lot more trades, then you could get away when trading a dot. Okay? If you're beginning to trade, I would look for a cross minimum. 
So I would not look for this scenario at all. If you're a beginning trader, then I would suggest that you keep focus to here. Okay? That means you're not going to get a lot of trades, but when the trades do come, they're going to be high probability. Okay? So let me give you an example. If you have a green background on a three-minute chart and three minutes was your trading time frame and you see a X below price, that means that's the support that you're looking to put the trade on. And we'll go for some examples in just a moment. Okay? Now that's assuming you're a day trader. If you're a 60-minute trader, two-hour, four-hour, daily, weekly, monthly, then what you're going to do is you're going to apply these rules down here. Okay? If you're a pullback trader for a swing or long-term time frame, you can have a dot in some scenarios. If you take a pullback trade off a dot, that's extremely low probability. I would not recommend it at all. Okay? The minimum you're looking for as a swing or long-term trader is an X. Okay? The best scenario, of course, is this one here. Okay? But this is minimum that you're looking for. Okay? So this should explain the dot and crosses and that everyone's confused on. So hopefully that's all clear to everyone. So, and we'll start looking at some charts in just a moment, and then we'll go for that example, and you could see exactly how to look this out. Okay? Me, let me kind of give you an idea. For day trading, I only trade a 30 minute. Okay? That's the lowest time frame I trade. Why? For me, I have to have a three time frame scenario. So if I trade a 30 minute, then I always want to make sure there's a 10 minute below me and a 60 minute above me. Okay? So what I look for when I'm day trading is I look for a 30 minute green shaded area or red shaded area and then I look for a cross or a cross and dot. Okay? I don't like taking a 30 minute trade with a purple dot by itself. If I do, that means it's aggressive. Okay? But if you're conservative, you're always looking for a 30 minute setup with a cross or a cross and a dot. Okay? If I'm swing trading, where I'm trading either a 60 minute, 2 hour, or 4 hour, then I'm looking for the cross is minimum or, and I'm looking for a dot cross. I always look for a dot and cross for either day trading or swing trading and that's the first thing I scan for always. Okay? If I don't see that, then I'll sit there and look for a cross. Okay, so that's my step-by-step -step mentality when I'm trading. And you guys could see that on the social media from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that, where I'm continuously posting charts day in and day out for various instruments from currency, stocks, futures, and everything out there. You can see both pullbacks and breakout trades that I'm posting out there. Okay, so hopefully this is clear now. Uh, the biggest question here a lot of people are asking is, if the dot and cross were off each other, is still okay? Yes. I'm looking for them to be in the same bar. That's minimum what I'm looking for. Okay? Now, this is what I posted. This is the rules we went through in the launch webinar. So you guys could go for this in great detail because I went through that in great detail. So this is the breakdown of the rules through words instead of a call flow step by step. Okay? Now, the other thing we discussed is, is past IMTF values. So a couple of people have asked is, how do I choose my targets? How do I choose where I should take some positions off because I made some good money? So these are questions that continuously we keep on getting asked. In the webinar, we discuss these trades. Okay? What you're looking for is on the higher time frames, you're looking back at the past and you're trying to find dots or crosses that started trends. Okay? And if you look here, all you do is look at this chart here, you could see that this is a trend here. You could see that this is a trend here, and so forth, okay? So what I'm looking for, if price is going up, I got to choose a target or a place where I want to take some positions off and tighten up my stop. So what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for, since price is going up here, I'm looking back here, and I'm looking for this trend that started downwards here, okay? And I'm looking to find dots or crosses that started that trend here. 
So you could have a cross. If there was a cross up here, then that was a resistance that started the trend. That's perfectly fine for me. If there was a cross right here, that that was basically a support. It broke to start the trend. So I'm looking for dots and crosses in the past that started trends. When I find them, that basically tells me what my targets are, what we call our preserve mode, which should be in current time. Okay? And that's basically how you're using these past support resistances. And if you look here, you could see that right here, this trend right here started, there's a little black cross right there. If you draw a line here, this was a resistance, it broke to start the trend here. So if you're betting on this instrument going down, then what you're doing is you're looking for at least this price to come to this level here where you're looking to take profits or you're looking to take some positions off and you're looking to tighten up your stop. Okay? So these past IMTF values, which are crosses and dots, help you determine where your target should be and where your also your profit taking should be if you're looking to take some positions off. Okay? And I specifically look for crosses on higher time frames for my targets. That's the way my rules always are. If I don't see crosses, then I'll go to dots, but I'm always looking for crosses first, okay? Let me go back for some of these here. This, we went through in great detail on the other webinars, so you guys could go back to that and reference that there. You could see here, this is basically Euro USD. You could see here, this was going down and it pulled back. This was the resistance it held, and if you look backwards, there's a cross right here way, way back in the past that was established back in 2003, this cross right there. And you could see that was a resistance. It broke to start this upward trend here. Okay? And then you could see here there's a cross here. And if you draw that line here, that was a major resistance here. And you could see right here, right here, right here, this cross right there haunted price for years. And then if you look here, once we sat there and came down here, this was a major resistance here that basically was established in 2015 that never could break, which was established from this cross back here in 2003. Okay? So that's there. So let's move forward. So you guys should see that now. And this is just examples there. So now let me switch over to trading view. So let's go through some charts and go through some basic stuff on there. So let me flip my screen. Okay. Should be appearing in a minute. Okay. Now. Now, the first question a lot of people ask is the indicator. How do you add the indicator? Well, if you come in here... If you go anywhere on the chart back here and you right mouse click, you do insert indicator. Okay? Now once you purchase the indicator, okay, you all you have to do is go to invite scripts. If you go to invite scripts, not my scripts, not technical analysis, not anywhere, you have to go to this invite only scripts here, and at that point, whatever we enabled you for, it'll show up automatically. Okay. If you don't see that, that means we haven't enabled you on it at all. Once you get it, then all you do is click on that indicator and it will automatically appear on your chart. Okay. Now, once it appears in your chart, it will look like it's here. Okay. Now, notice one thing. This is kind of hard to see. Let me do this real fast. Notice here, I have three indicators here that are called IMTF. If you have three of them here, that means you added it too many times. If you need, if you did that, then all you do is click on X here and it'll automatically go away. Now, I'm going to keep this on here. I have two of them here and I'm going to show you why in a minute. Notice this little thing is blue here. That means it's hidden. Okay? If I click on this blue here, it'll automatically disappear. So you could show and hide your indicator that way. Okay? Now, once you do that, then what you could do is you could, if you see this here, you can have all these values here. First, people are, people are saying, my indicator is not working because I got this NA value here. No, that is correct. Okay? That means basically this is looking at all the combinations for support resistance. 
okay? If it has an NA there, that means it didn't find it at that level. There's nothing going wrong at all. And in fact, if you want, come over here, this data window here, and if you put your mouse over, put your mouse over here, you could see the levels here. So we're looking at different combinations for the circles, the, the circles which are called day and swing boundary levels, and then we're looking for basically different levels for swing and long term. Okay, so all these are all the different combinations there. Do not worry about them when they say NA. Okay. I don't want you guys to worry about this at all. So what you should be doing is ignoring all that and just looking on your chart. On your chart, when you see these values here, that's what really matters. Okay? Now I'm going to do something here. Back in here, I'm going to search indicator. And the latest release, which is 2.4, and that's not, you guys don't have that yet, but that we're about to release that probably tomorrow or this weekend, and that's 2.4. And if you look in here, you will see the values here. Now, there's the value there. If you want to see what the value is, then you come over here and you put your mouse over it and you can look over to the right and you could see it here. This value right there is right there. Okay? But really what you need to do is do not worry about the NA values here at all. In fact, I don't even like to show this here. I like to just do that right there and it disappears. Okay? Some people are asking me, how do you get this Euro USD in the background? Well, all you have to do is look at the chart here. So if I come over here to chart properties right here and go to background, see this watermark here? Okay. I do that watermark there and at that point I make sure that I have the transparency right there. Sorry. Right there. And what it will do is it will show you the symbol name there. Okay. These are my default settings here. And if you look at the trading view indicator video, we go for this in great detail, okay? So I'm not going to go through that in detail right now, okay? Now, let's do this here. So we've done that there. Now, one of the questions people ask is, how do I get rid of the Ichimoku cloud and all that? I want to apply it to my existing system. So what you have to do is you have, there's a little spokes wheel here right beside the name. It's, if you put your mouse over it, it says format. If I click on that, this is where you get everything here. If you want to disable the Ichimoku information, then all you have to do is uncheck right here. So if you notice one thing, I'm unchecking there. And if I come all the way down here, cloud color, all the Ichimoku values are gone. Okay? That's why I have this other indicator here. Because if you look at this other indicator, what I have is I have one version here that doesn't have the Ichimoku values and I have another version that does. Okay? So let me come back in here. Now, let's say you can't see these dots across it. You want to make them thicker. Well, all you have to do is you, if you want to make them thicker, come in here and choose these values here and it will make everything thicker. Okay? So you could literally control that yourself. You could control it. I'm just going to increase everything drastically so you could see it. And then you could save this in your individual profile. If you want to change the cross, and you could change it to something else if you like. Okay? So once you do that, you could do that. If you want to make the cloud thicker and a little darker, you could do that here too. So you literally you could sit there and come in here and you could change any of these parameters here and click OK and boom, you'll see all that stuff there. Okay, so all that is there, so we've gone through that in great detail. Now, the second thing a lot of people are complaining about is it's taking a while to load the indicator. Yes, it is going to take a while to load the indicator, okay? We cannot control that at all. You have to understand, we are looking at a whole bunch of time frames. So we're looking at seven plus time frames every single minute okay every single second and we're calculating everything here so if you look if you could scroll back and you could see that these dots crosses and these zones are there and if you keep on scrolling back you're always gonna see that so that's a lot of crunching we're doing so it is gonna take some time that to load okay now the load time also depends on trading view 
their servers, and it also depends on your machine and your browser and all that stuff. We cannot control that at all. Okay. One of the things we're looking at doing is maybe separating out the Ichimoku cloud and all that from the IMTF to speed things up, we're, but we're testing that out right now. So right now, the speed it's coming at, that's basically what you have to deal with. Okay. It's not the fastest thing, but it's just me. It's still easier than you looking at different time frames and doing all these calculations yourself. We're automatically doing that for you. So you have to bear with it on the speed it's going through. Okay, if for some reason you don't get a dot here, and sometimes yeah, you look at the Ichimoku indicator and it says out of script error, then just reload the browser. Okay, because sometimes that happens where TradingView doesn't calculate the indicator values at all, and it tells you out of script. If it does, just reload the indicator, and you should be good to go. Okay, now let's go through some of these things in here. Let's go through some setups and go from there. Okay, now here is a bear setup. So let's do this first. Let's hide the Ichimoku and just show you non Ichimoku first. Okay, so here's a bear setup here. So this basically started here and then basically comes here. Okay, now this is a daily time frame. Since I'm on the daily time frame, that means basically if this is my trading time frame, I'm a long-term trader. If I'm a long-term trader, that means basically I need to look for crosses to take a trade. A cross with a dot or just a cross by itself. So if you look here, and I'm going to zoom in here. When I look at this trade here, this was bearish. I look above this price, there's no cross. 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 Remember, I'm trying to go bearish, so you're always looking for a resistance cross above price to sit there and do a pullback trade. There's nothing there. On this bar, I look above me, there's no cross. But I look below me, there's a cross. So this cross is a support, not a resistance. That's not what I'm good at all. So you cannot sit there and put a pullback trade on this because this is below price at all. So this cross right here is not a pullback cross at all. Okay, This nothing, nothing, nothing. So in this scenario here, in this red zone here, there is no pullback trade at all in this trade. Everyone see that? Okay, And even if you sat there and put a trade on here, these green dots here showed you that you never got stopped out of this trade at all. So the only option you had was to sit there and put a breakout trade, these blue dots. Now let me thicken up these blue dots here so you guys could see it. And that way. And I'll thicken up my stops. Okay? So the only thing you could do in this red zone here is to place a breakout order here. You place a breakout order here. On this red bar here, you basically enter this trade. When you enter this trade, there's your trailing stop right there, which is the green dots. Okay, so that's basically how you look for this setup here. Okay, if you look backwards here, there was a bullish setup here. In this bullish setup here, you look below you. There's no cross. There's no cross below you in any part of this here. So there was no pullback opportunity in this green zone here. The only thing that was was a breakout, which price never got to and never triggered. Okay. You look at this green zone here, there was no pullback level two. Okay? And the reason why you're not getting any pullback levels in here is because this is consolidating. And what's happening is is our multiple time frame formula is keeping you out of losing and going whipsawed in and out of trades. Sometimes you may win, sometimes you may lose. It's keeping you out of these pullback trades. So it's telling you during a consolidation pattern, the only thing you really could do is do a breakout trade right here, which is safer. Here's a bearish setup. Here's a bearish setup here. Notice this is a red zone here. Then look above price. Oh look, I got some black crosses. So now I could put a bearish setup here. So I could short this instrument here at these black crosses right there. My stop would be there. And if you look, based on how we basically talked about it before, you're targeting this pivot low there. So if you look at the tool here, you could sit there and say, okay, 
I'm going to put this trade on here where this is right there and I want to target least coming down to here. Okay, that could be your scenario there. Or some people like to look at the closing price and say, okay, you know what? I want at least to sit there and come to here where at that point I'm going to take some profit and let the rest ride with lower with a tighter stop. So there's multiple different things you could do. But you could see here, I'm entering here, and then I'm going to use that as my trailing stop right there, and then I'm going to choose how far this thing's going to go down. Okay? So you could see this trade worked out right there. Okay? And if you scroll backwards and you're trying to find out how far will it go, will it come back to the support resistance, if you scroll backwards here, notice there's a cross right here, right there. So if you look at the cross right there, you should at least be sitting there trying to take it down to this level right there. And at that point, probably taking some positions off because you don't know if it's going to sit there and keep on continuing to go down to retest that low or not. Because overall, you're in a big consolidation pattern here. Okay? Now, so that's pretty much simplified there. That's without any Ichimoku or anything there at all. Now I'm going to bring in Ichimoku in just a moment. Now, there's a question. What's the difference between bold crosses and light crosses? There is no bold cross and light crosses. There's one cross and then there's dots, and that's it. There's no different colors at all here, okay? Now, let me enable the Ichimoku. So if you're an Ichimoku trader, it's clear and simple. Just waiting for it to load. There's your bearish zone here, okay? So in here, if you're an Ichimoku trader, you know you can't do a pullback trade at all because the green line's not flat. Okay, so if you're an Ichimoku trader, you knew all, one way is, is that based on optimization with Ichimoku rules, the green line's not flat, so you can't do a pullback trade. There was no cross or dot at the green line or the SKB, which is the black line here. So based on Ichimoku optimization rules, you know there's no pullback. Over here, you could do a breakout based on Ichimoku. Over here, on this one, over here, you sit there and you could do a pullback trade on the green line here, but you could see, also see that basically you had a support of the black line here and the green was moving, which is not good. So based on Ichimoku rules, you would keep out of pullback trades here and you could do a breakout here. Okay, So you could apply any of the rules here at any time that you want. Okay, Now, some people say, okay, on a three-minute. So someone was saying, if I got a green-shaded green area on a daily, will I get a green-shaded area on a three-minute? No. The shaded areas look for setup on that particular time frame. Okay? So just because you got a green-shaded area on a daily time frame doesn't mean you're going to get a green-shaded area on a three-minute. These green-shaded areas look for whatever time frame you're looking at, it looks for a setup. So you could see here that the bullish setup was right here in this zone right there. Okay, You could see that the breakout level got triggered here, and you could see that this trade is still active. You're not stopped out of this trade at all, and you could see the trailing stops right there right now. Okay, So you could go down to whatever trading time frame you are at, and you could see all the setups and everything. One of the things you guys should be doing is scrolling backwards. Look at these green shaded areas and red shaded areas, and look and apply your trading plan and see what would happen. Okay? All you do is scroll backwards and that's like back testing, believe it or not. So this has done it here. The good thing is is that you do not have to look at any other time frame anymore. We're doing all the work for you. We're doing all the multiple time frame analysis for you. If you're a Fibonacci trader, we're automatically doing Fibonacci clustering for you. People do Fibonacci clustering on one or two time frames. We're doing Fibonacci clustering for seven plus time frames automatically for you, so you don't have to do anything at all. If you're on a 60 minute, you know you have a cross like this, you know that this basically is a support for all the swing traders and long term traders there. Okay? <clears throat> so let's go through and answer some of the questions people are asking. Okay, first question. 
Uh, will there be a manual for the indicator? No, we've elected to do short, simple videos and a series of videos basically for on, you, on how to use everything. As I mentioned, we have a video on TradingView. We have a video on the IMTF indicator. We also have a video on the strategies on how to use this shaded areas uh, with the IMTF dots and crosses with Ichimoku and without too, so you could access those. And then also, if you look on social media every day, we pretty much are posting tons of charts, tutorials, and stuff like that for you guys. Um, uh, there was a question. The green uh, zones of the cloud and pink area are very faint. Can you make them darker? Yep. All you do is format the indicator here and come down to the cloud colors here. And you could choose a darker shaded uh, blue, maybe right there. Whoops, that's not darker. How's that right there? You could make this, or you just do that right there. And you could make that darker or lighter. I, I prefer them lighter, but uh, that's my personal preference. You guys could choose that lighter or darker, whichever way you want. Okay? Uh, sorry. Uh, how can I use this indicator to fil filter for the Indian stock market? Um, you could use, This indicator is pretty much you could use it to filter out any uh, instruments out there for whatever TradingView supports. I think TradingView supports, um, uh, I think, UK, Australia, Indian stock markets, and the other vendors. All you do is pretty much if you come to the I right here, the home page, and then scroll downwards here, uh, GoPro, and then uh, let's see where they're at. right here so these are all the markets they support from UK Russia India New Zealand and so forth so you pretty much could see any of those instruments in trading view here uh, so this indicator will work there if you're looking for a scanner I will talk about the scanner in just a moment we do have a scanner where you can search for these scans and dots and all that stuff uh, that's on our website that's available there you cannot sit there and scan through TradingView or any other platform at all. All the scanning is pretty much done on our website where we pretty much support all U.S. instruments, Europe, uh, Australia, Singapore, China, India, and so forth. And I'll show you the scanner in just a moment. How do I use TradingView for the first time? Uh, as I mentioned, there's a video on TradingView. We can send you that. We'll talk about the other platforms too a little later. Um, what do you do if the cross and a dot uh, to enter a trade are not together? Uh, if they're not together, that's fine as long as they're on the same time frame. You choose whichever one price is going to run into first. Uh, it's pretty much, uh, you know, if it's a, it's a bullish scenario, you choose whatever the dot across is the first support as your entry. Um, your instructions video included to trade only when there is a green or shaded. Uh, is there another video to discuss trading outside these areas? Right now, and we'll show you this one based on the product uh, roadmap. Right now, we're focusing on on the videos right now on you guys trading in these shaded areas here. Okay, reason why? That's basically where the big institutional waves gonna can occur. There are other areas which are what we call counter trend which we are not available right now. In the future, we will be providing another indicator, which would be a counter trend indicator that will allow you to sit there and get into uh, pullbacks and counter trend trades, which are pretty much other levels uh, outside these shaded areas. But right now, we've decided to release the high probability, the institutional wave uh, indicator, and that's pretty much where these shaded areas are right now. But in the next couple of months, we will be releasing other indicators that allow you to get other parts of this wave here so that this little pullback right here is not an institutional wave. This is a pullback here. So this could be the other indicator that's going to be shaded areas, um, but that's not available right now. <clears throat> Do you have to have a subscription to TradingView Pro to access the indicator? Uh, no, this works for any subscription, even the free version. Uh, for TradingView. It doesn't matter what subscription you have for TradingView. It's an indicator you could add uh, and that's the way it is right now. Now how, if TradingView changes things in the future, I don't know, um, but you know we can't control the broker at all. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we're supporting other platforms out there too. 
how to use the cloud indicator with uh, it, uh, the indicator. I'll talk about uh, on how you could optimize Ichimoku and so forth in just a moment. Uh, I'll leave that in a minute. Are you speaking? Uh, yes. Uh, stocks and IMTF indicators start to disconnect on TradingView platform. Uh, Jim, I'm not sure what do you mean by stock and the IMTF indicators start to disconnect on TradingView platform. I use it every day for stocks. Um, so, I mean, we're continuously using this every day for stocks, currencies, and futures. Uh, Jim, if you, if you have any issues, just uh, send us an email with a chart, and then we can look at that and go from there. If a candle goes above the breakout dots, one candle after the green zone ends, can trade still be considered viable? Well, the, so the question comes down to is, uh, after a trade uh, gets those blue dots and breaks out, uh, can you still enter the trade afterwards? Yes, you can, but you're not going to be in a shaded area. Because what's going to happen is the shaded area basically disappears once the breakout entry occurs. But you could always enter again at that level if you want. Um, platforms, that's the main question. We're going to talk about the other platforms in just a moment. Uh, we're not looking at trades right now. I uh, trade mostly stocks with less than 20 million float. Does the tool work on these stocks also? It pretty much works on any stock that you pretty much will sit there and put in here. And you can use it for any instrument in any, any time frame. Uh, how do you use it with Fibonacci, Azam? Uh, you could see that on the launch video we have. You could also see it on uh, social media where we posted some videos on how to use the IMTF indicator with Fibonacci and also Elite Wave 2. Um, how can you differentiate between uh, trend and boundary conditions? There's no trend or boundary conditions anymore. Everything's all the same colors. Are the is there training videos? Yes. Uh, are you over the eight? Uh, is there any way to improve the color resolution of the dots and crosses? Uh, you could guys could change the colors and dots at any time you want. Uh, how do you optimize scans for IMTF with a general? Okay. Is there a link on how to adjust settings in TradingView? Yes, there's a link on how to adjust TradingView. That's in the TradingView uh, webinar. Can you discuss value trades with Fibonacci? Okay, that's a Fibonacci question. Remember, this is not a trading view. This is not a trading webinar at all. This is for Q and A for the indicator. Okay, so there's no way I'm going to go through all those trades. Uh, uh, entry uh, exit dots are based on what? Uh, it's a proprietary formula we have. That's basically there. Uh, on breakouts, do you want to wait for the candle close? On breakouts, you as soon as it hits the blue dots, you're pretty much entering that tra that trade. Uh, on entries and also on conditional stops. You don't want to wait for the bar to close because if you do, anything can happen with volatility. Can you post a chart on TradingView? Yes, you could post a chart on TradingView. They have this little publish area down here and you could publish there. Um, so I'm just going for some of these questions. See that now, if I exit it, okay. Do you need a subscription for the scanner? Scanner, there is a subscription cost to that, and I'll go for that in just a moment. Uh, does the shading area appear? Um, so the shaded area does appear on its own uh, when it, uh, the bullish setup occurs or the bearish setup occurs. Uh, okay. I think I'm getting there. Okay. Double purple dots. Uh, you Okay, one other question that some people have is you could have two purple dots or two crosses on one bar. So you can have two support resistances, two day and support resistances that occur on one bar. It's not frequent that will happen, but that, that, that can occur where you could have two purple dots on the same bar and so forth. Okay, that's not the great scenario. Uh, because you kind of want only one support resistance. So when you have two of them, you kind of want to avoid that scenario as much as possible. Uh, 
okay. Uh, there is a release. The two, everyone right now is on 2.3. 2.4 version will be coming out this uh, in the next couple of days that has bug fixes and everything. Uh, and I'll talk about the releases and all that in just a moment. Okay. I think we got through all the questions. So let's go through a couple of more things. Let's go for the scanner. So if you go to IchimukuTrade.com, which is our website, um, this is a subscription base. You guys could sit there and sign up for a 30-day free trial if you haven't already. Uh, you could come in here, and what you can do is you could search for these crosses and things, uh, crosses and dots. So what I'm going to do is the, we have these things called profiles which save your parameters. I'm just going to reset mine in here. And then if you come in here, right here to the general tab, right here you could search for dots and crosses. So if you're basically looking for both a dot and cross on the same bar, all you do is under the control key, click on update, and now basically it's going to sit there and find everything that has a dot across right now and then you could sit there and apply it to whatever market you're interested in from Australia, Canada, China, currencies, ETF, futures, Malaysia, uh, Indian stocks, Japan, Middle East, S&P 500 and so forth. So if you apply S&P 500 here you're basically going to get this list here. Okay, so we got this list here, and then if you're looking for a setup, okay, so let's say I'm a 30-minute trader or a 60-minute trader. So if I'm a 30-minute trader, all I'll do is come in here, and if you're an Ichimoku trader, you can apply Ichimoku filtering in here. So I'm looking for a shaded area, which is the number four, and basically this is all the stocks in the S&P 500 right now that have a dot and cross on the same bar and a setup a sh that's in a shaded area right now. So these are the, out of S&P 500, these are the only opportunities right now that you see on a 30 minute that have a dot and cross on the same bar and it's in a shaded area. Okay, if you look the where it says red right here, that's basically bearish. So if I sort this here, if you're looking for bearish opportunities, there's all these right here. If you're looking for bullish, there's right there. Okay. And you could pretty much do the same for any market out there. I think someone was asking, how do you scan for the Indian stock market? Here's how you do the Indian stock market. And you can see there's nothing there. And let's go to higher time frame. Oh, and the reason why is there's not much liquidity on the 30-minute uh, for the Indian stock market. So quickly just go here and come to strategy four. And you can see there's no opportunities right now at all. Let's just look for a cross. And you're not seeing many opportunities at all right now. So let's just take off the strategy and see if we see anything there. Nope, nothing at all. So this is how you could do filtering based on scans and everything for various instruments around the world. And you could see you could do looks for setups on any of these time frames that we support there. Okay. Um, you you don't have to select a time frame at all. Someone was asking, do I need to select a time frame? No, you don't. Uh, if you don't select any time frame here, this will basically sit there and find right here uh, dots and crosses on the same bar. It does not matter what time frame at all. And then you could just sit there and do filtering. So basically, the scanner basically allows you to find the. It's it's this is a glorified scanner that basically you could sit there and look for these dots and crosses and then you could comp combine it with Ichimoku filtering for the optimization. Okay, And that's basically what the scanner of the website does. This is a subscription base service. So if you look in here, um, this is a subscription and then you could see here the subscription price right now is basically $59.99 a month. Um, if you sign up for a whole year then you get two months for free. Uh, let me warn you guys, this price is going to increase. So anyone that's basically getting it, they're going to get grandfathered in at this price. But we are going to be increasing this price in the next couple of months, that's for sure. Um, 
due to all the high probability scanning and everything that this thing's offering um, because the institutions use it along with retail people too. But we are going to be increasing that price so whoever gets in now are uh, going to be locked in this price and not going to be subject to price increases. Okay. So that's basically the scanner glorified to now. Let me come back to my presentation. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so let's summarize everything here. Okay. So first things first, support is available via email. Okay. Do not call us about this indicator at all. The reason why, it's a $99 product. If you guys think you're getting phone support, that's not going to happen. Okay? Uh, the, so if you guys have questions, please send us a snapshot of the chart and send it to us at email here at info at eiicapital.com. And trust me, we have people monitoring the inbox and we're going to be looking at things there. Res response time. Just because we want to make sure we give ample time here, just in case if we get flooded with email, our response time is normally one to five business days. Trust me, if it's an urgent question, we're going to respond right away. If it's not urgent, you then and we're flooded with a lot of support questions, then it may take a little time. But I want to make sure we give ourselves ample time for people to, for us to respond and our support team to so respond. Okay, so that's one to five business days for the response for answering. Okay, version control. All updates for this indicator will be provided for free. Okay, um, the one key thing is is that I cannot update the indicator and it automatically be applied to your charts at all. Unfortunately, we have to release a new version every single time. When I release a new version, that means you have to re-add it to your charts. Okay, so. What we're going to do is whenever we release a new version, we will email you and the old version will still be active for one week. And we will send you reminders too. After one week, we'll disable the old version and everyone should be on the new version and so forth. Okay? We shouldn't be going for many versions at all. We've got one big new version that's coming out this week. After that, it should be locked down pretty much to a point we shouldn't have to sit there and come out with new versions at all. Uh, reason why this has been thoroughly tested for a couple of years now, so it should be completely ready to go. Okay, scanner. As people have been asking us, can we do scanning through uh, TradingView? TradingView has a simple version of scanner. It does not do any indicators at all. So no, you cannot do that through TradingView. It's only through our IchimugaTrade.com website is where you could do scanning. And then we're going to keep it that way for no matter what product we release in the future, whatever platform, all the scanning features and functionality will only be available at IchimugaTrade.com. Okay? Improve. How do you improve your trading? Okay? So as we mentioned, we kind of went down two different paths. One is where you apply your own technical system for optimization, or you could apply Ichimoku optimization. If you're interested in learning the Ichimoku optimization, we have a one-month mentoring course that's, that's been incredible. Everyone that's been taking it, they really, really loved it. Okay? Uh, what's the price for the one month, guys? They're going to tell me the price. It's less than $400, I know that. And there's probably a special promotion right now you guys could probably go to, but either way, okay? If you guys want questions answered in regards to your trade, we do have consulting where we charge $100 an hour, minimum one hour, okay? So if you need help with your trades and stuff like that, then there is a consulting scenario you can go down the path of, okay? Um, but most of the times we don't even get involved with this consulting at all. But if some people want that one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting uh, scenario. If, the, if that's the case and you do want that, that's basically the price we charge minimum one hour there. Okay. The one-month mentoring is basically there's it's, the list price is $399. There's a special right now for $339. If you guys are interested in that, you all you do is email at info at eiicapital.com. The one-month mentoring is basically where we go for two hours every week for a whole month, and we literally take a trading plan and show you step-by-step step on exactly where the entries should be, how to optimize, and everything. 
So we take everything go for step by step. Now, if you're looking to do trading full time, that's when we have our university program, which pretty much is minimum six months commitment on your side and our side. If you're interested in any of these things here, you could pretty much email us here. Okay, but the biggest way to learn, believe it or not, is social media. We have tons of videos where you guys are, we are putting out every day, and we also, uh, you know, on social media from everything from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so forth. Um, so we're doing tons of videos every day, tons of blogs every day, and so forth. So that's the best way you guys could learn. But if you want to learn more on how to use Ichimoku and do optimization, there's three paths here. One is one month mentoring, two, which is uh, for right now for 339. Second is consulting, or and the third one is basically the uh, the, the university program, uh, which is full blown course for minimum six months. Okay, now. Roadmap. This is the question everyone's asking. When are we going to be supporting various platforms out there? Notice there's a little asterisk here. Okay, and the reason why the asterisk is there is that this it can be subject to change. Okay, we are doing multiple time frame analysis where we're analyzing more than seven time frames at one time down to a tick level. Okay, not many brokerages can do that or charting platforms could do that. And also, a lot of these brokerage or charting platforms do not have a development environment, okay? So we are facing big obstacles to take this indicator and apply it to various platforms out there, not due to our abilities, but due to the broker or charting platform out there, okay? So these are our goals or estimates, okay? If everything goes well, this then things will be released for these platforms and they'll be released hopefully around these dates. Okay, so right now we are estimating TradeStation to be released by the end of February. Okay, if you're a TradeStation user, uh, we have a spotlight presentation. I think I'm doing February 17th or 20 something, and you can find it on TradeStation. And if the indicator is ready to go, then we're pretty much going to launch it in that webinar uh, at that point. It'll be ready by the end of February if everything in our testing goes well. Okay. E-Signal will be launched after that sometime in April 2017. Then we're going to be looking at Ninja Trader at the beginning of summer. And then we're going to be looking at Thomson Reuters uh, Meta Trader around September 2017. So this is what we have slated right now. A lot of people ask, can this be available for Thinkorswim? No. Thinkorswim does really does not have a development environment for us to sit there and code it at all, so that's not even an option. If you're interested in a particular platform and you want us to look at it, you could send us an email and put a request for a feature request for that particular platform, and if we get a whole bunch of people requesting a particular platform, then we'll definitely look at that for development purposes. Remember, it's got to be a lot of people because we're only charging $99 a year for the trading view. Now, for these platforms here, the prices can be higher. TradeStation price will probably be a little higher. Uh, we're not sure what the pricing will be, but the development efforts on those are a little more longer than TradingView. Uh, so the, the prices can be a little more higher than what we're uh, doing right now for promotion of $99 a year. Okay, So prices and all this stuff are subject to change. Uh, so place to take that into consideration. Also, don't sit there and hold us to every one of these and get upset if we can't deliver it for that particular platform. Okay, We are going to do our best to do it, and trust me, we're good at handling obstacles these brokers and charting platforms give us. Okay, So that's the roadmap for the platforms. The roadmap for the indicators is this. These are what we're looking at. We're looking at, in, and we don't have dates for these at all. The uh, reason why is we're, our goal is to plan uh, to do the platforms first and then start doing some indicators and so forth. So we're hoping by summer to start releasing some of these indicators, which are more advanced. So one is going to be the counter trend indicator that's going to allow you to basically do pullback trades uh, and counter trend trades, and it's going to shade in the background for those particular and what we're going to do is we're going to not only just shade it in, but we're also going to do the optimization rules for you. So we're going to do optimization automatically with counter trend for you. So those are going to be high uh, probability counter trend trades. 
second thing we're going to release is a volatility indicator. Uh, basically, um, a lot of people are teaching people how uh, as soon as price comes out of the cloud and to take the trade. That's not good at all unless volatility is there. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit there and show you through an indicator by coloring the bars or something like that on how to trade volatility safely and how you could trade it with manly management and also with the correct signals to sit there and trade successfully and take volatility and turn it into a printing machine. Okay. Next one, we're going to do cloud optimization. A lot of people are asking us to take the red and the green background and optimize it with Ichimoku rules. So we're going to do some optimization on those uh, background colors so that automatically they'll be optimized for you so you don't have to do the optimization yourself. Okay, so we're going to look at that enhanced indicator out there. Another one people have been requesting is for us to do a Fibonacci indicator and maybe even harmonics and stuff like that. So we're going to be looking at those. If you're interested in something, then you're more than welcome to request a feature request for that particular uh, concept over to us. But we will be basically talking about how you could type the IMTF indicator and apply it to any technical system out there from Bollinger, Elite Wave, and so forth out there. So this is the path that we're going down this year. Um, if you guys notice, this is a, a very, very cheap method uh, for you guys could now to start becoming successful. Okay, where he gotten great feedback from hundreds of people on how this indicator has basically changed their trading, had kept them out of a lot of losing trades, and helped them stay focused and keep into long-term trends, uh, which then they be basically be profitable with. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up everything there. I think I've got everything here. Uh, someone was asking about Motive Wave. Motive Wave, uh, please email us for whatever platform. And when you email us, just put in the subject feature request. And what we'll do is we'll just tally up everything into a database. And that way the development team can see it uh, along with the sales and marketing team to determine uh, if it's worth going down the development effort. Okay. Um, I think that's it. The indicators someone's asking about the timelines are. We don't have timelines right now. Um, we will keep you updated via emails. And anyone that's uh, pretty much purchased the indicator, uh, we will be providing updates uh, as we move forward. So don't worry. Uh, you know, we continuously going to be supporting everyone there. If you have not purchased the indicator and you're interested, then all you have to do is go to ichimukutrade.com slash indicator. If you're purchasing it and you don't have a TradingView ID, you need to go get your TradingView ID first. So if that's the case, you need to go to ichimukutrade.com slash TradingView, get your TradingView ID, and then you can come here. We got basically a promotional price right now. It's only $99 a year, which is less than $0.41 cents a day. Okay. So this is a limited time promotion, trust me. It's not going to stay this $99 a year. People that purchase it now are pretty much grandfathered in for years. Okay. Someone was asking, is it possible to transfer the trading station from TradingView? Yes, the, the option will be available there. Uh, we may charge a 5 or five or $10 fee to do the transfer uh, since you guys got to remember, these are low cheap prices right there. Uh, but yeah, we will be doing that along with the price differential. Um, you got to wait till pretty much um, at the end of February for us to pretty much uh, launch uh, give you the pricing and all that because right now we haven't even uh, discussed that internally on what we're going to do for that. What are the questions? Let me just go for for some reason it's just stopped. Okay. Amy Broker not right now. I mean, the platforms, let's, listen, guys, it's very clear. We already told you the platforms we're looking at. If you don't see your platform in that list, that means we're not looking at it right now. As I mentioned, you got to send us the email with a feature request on there, and we'll look at it. So I don't know, you know, all that. 
Okay. If you're interested in the university program, we have our pre-workshops that are pretty much starting this week. Uh, the next class will be here in Boca, which will be March 3rd, 4th weekend. If you're interested, email us definitely by tomorrow at info at eiicapital.com and uh, because you need to get in right away if you're interested in the university and the boot camps and stuff like that. That's it, guys. Hope you guys found this informative. Um, hopefully we'll do more of these sessions for Q&A and stuff like that. Uh, we probably will be doing later on uh, a session for trading opportunities. But right now, we just need to pretty much uh, get the Q&A stuff going. And then maybe after March, we'll do some webinars on uh, trading setups and stuff like that. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening or a good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at.